Number one, walking home. I don't really want to tell you what area I live in. I guess no one will do anything about it, but it makes me a bit paranoid. It suffice to say that I grew up in a nice traditional country town. There were a lot of nice country roads in the area. Some of them were a bit notorious for being makeout spots for teenagers. My girlfriend at the time, and I should add that she would never go to a makeout spot with me, lived in a really nice old house out of town. Her family was quite wealthy, and their home looked like a plantation. I have to drive out of town, down a country road, in order to get to her place. Along that road is a really old covered bridge. I've never really liked driving across that, though. It was very creepy, and I was always worried that the thing would fall apart, too. But the worst part was just how creepy it was. I had a horrible experience on the bridge once. I had been out late on the date with my girlfriend, and by the time that I got her back home, her entire family was asleep. I had to quietly drop her off before going home myself. On the way back towards town, my car began to make some weird noises, and before I knew it, it just turned off. I had to really twist the wheel in an effort to get it off the road. I tried using my cell phone, but I couldn't get a signal. I didn't know the first thing about fixing cars. I had to decide what was better. Trying to walk back to my girlfriend's house or just walk back towards town. Since my girlfriend's family was asleep, I opted to go to town. So I began walking. It was a creepy and very still night. Only very seldom was there even a light breeze. The moon was the only source of light out there. Although it was enough to walk by, it really wasn't that great. I didn't normally find myself getting scared of the dark or anything. But this time, I was definitely a little apprehensive. Those country roads can be a whole lot scarier than city roads can. Eventually, I came upon the bridge. I had forgotten about it because I'd been so concerned about my car. If I had thought it was dark along the road, that was really nothing compared to the pitch black facing me inside that covered bridge. I was very hesitant to go into it, but I couldn't go around it. It was over a large creek, and I had no plans on going swimming that night. When I got up to the bridge, I hesitated for a long time. I don't know how long I stood there, dreading having to walk into that dark structure. But like jumping into a cold swimming pool, I realized if I just did it, I'd get it over with, and that would be much better. So I walked slowly into the bridge. It was dark. I mean, dark. At one point, I put my hand up in front of my face and I couldn't see it. All I could see was some light coming from the opening. All I could hear were the creaking sounds of my feet as they pressed down on the old wooden boards. But I kept my eyes focused on the other end, and I knew I would be there quickly. Suddenly, a dark figure walked into the opening of the bridge. I stopped suddenly, surprised anyone else was out here. When I stopped walking, however, the creaking sounds of the boards did not stop. Someone was walking behind me, too. I instinctively turned around. I couldn't imagine that these guys were up to anything good. I couldn't see the person behind me. I decided to try and run for the portal in which I could see the man standing. Before I could, however, the person behind me grabbed me and shoved me head first into the wall of the bridge. I felt a few more hits on the back of my head before I completely blacked out. When I woke up, I had the worst headache I'd ever imagined. I was still in the bridge. My head was throbbing, and I could feel some blood on the back of my head when I tried rubbing the painful spot. I could also tell that whoever had attacked me had taken my clothes. And all of them. I got up, my body swaying for a little bit, and began walking awkwardly towards the portal. I got out of the bridge saw that I was indeed completely stripped and bloody. I took only a few steps out of the bridge before I collapsed again. Next thing I remembered, 
I was in a hospital bed. Apparently I had been lying outside the bridge until morning. My girlfriend's father was driving to town and saw me. He got me to the hospital. I never found out who attacked me. It could have just been a simple mugging, I guess. I didn't know if I had any enemies who planned it out. In the future, though, even driving across that bridge was a terrifying experience. Number 2. Ghost Town There's this small covered bridge that leads into a historic downtown area not far from where I live. Ironically, the bridge itself was built more recently, and there was nothing historic about it. I don't know, I just always thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, my story takes place pretty late at night. Like a lot of historic towns that rely completely on tourism for their economy, this town closed down really early in the evening, and from that point on, it was a ghost town. After five, you couldn't find a single shop open. I was trying to start up a YouTube channel of my own. I wanted to record exploration of abandoned areas. I figured I could film around this town when it was closed down. I could pretend it was a ghost town. I set up to do this on a Wednesday night. I figured it was better than doing it on a weekend. I drove into town and as usual, it was completely dead. I got my camera out and took quite a bit of film that night. Of course, I didn't encounter anything like ghosts or anything, but I really hadn't been expecting to. I could add suspenseful stuff in the editing. I was about to leave the town when I remembered the covered bridge. Those things have a reputation for being creepy, so I decided I would go and film around it. The town was pretty small, so rather than drive to the bridge, I just decided to walk over to it. I thought maybe I could get some creepy footage along the way. The bridge did not disappoint at all. It was extremely creepy. It was pretty small. Like I mentioned, it was really there more as a decoration than anything. I recorded around it. There was a lot of trees. I was thinking that it might be cool to edit something into the video, like an orb or some kind of other ghost. And yeah, I know it's dishonest, but at least I'm being honest now about what my intentions for my channel were. After filming around the bridge, I began walking up to it. I wanted to get a good shot of me walking through the bridge, so I began walking into it. As I mentioned, it was a very short bridge that covered a very small gap in the road. There weren't any lights inside the bridge, but that wasn't a big deal. It really wasn't that dark. I also had the light from my camera, so I was able to record the details of the bridge really well. As I was getting close to the far side of the bridge, and was only a few steps away. In mid-step, I heard a voice whisper, He's almost here. Give me the axe. Although it was a whisper, it was completely quiet outside, so I heard it as plain as day, and I stopped walking. I heard some rustling by the bridge opening, and saw the beginning of a figure move into the light. I turned, and forgot about my video, and just ran out the other side of the bridge. I didn't look back. I didn't want to know if something was following, or what that something could have been. I just wanted to get far away. I didn't stop running until I made it to my car. And it was when I made it to my car that I finally turned to see if anyone had been following me. No one had. Still, I was scared. I got into my car and made to drive out of the town. There was no real telling what might have happened that night. I accept the fact that it might have been teenagers messing with me, or something non-threatening. I mean, no one followed me. But in the slight possibility that there really were two people out there, waiting for me with an axe, well, that possibility chills me every time I think about it. Number 3. Haunted Bridge Well, I don't particularly believe in ghosts, but I've never been able to explain this story in any other way. I saw something that was really quite frightening, 
at an old covered bridge. The bridge is up in the hills. I've crossed it a few times on my way up to a cabin my family has out there. The bridge itself is very old and rickety. It also is over a thin but very deep ravine. Even though I've crossed it so many times, every time I get so much more nervous about it than I was the last time. It creaks as my car crosses it, and I could swear I feel it giving away. But I've been going across that bridge since I was about five years old, and it has always been like that, and it has always held. This particular story happened in the early fall. I wanted to spend some time up at my family's cabin because the mountains were beautiful in the fall. It was great watching the leaves turn the hills into different colors. And my favorite thing were the leaves that fell from the trees. It was basically like a leaf storm and it was very beautiful. I had been up at the cabin all weekend and Sunday evening. I had to drive to town in order to get something from the store. I wasn't really enthusiastic about driving on those mountain roads at evening or night. I had to drive really slow and really carefully. As I was driving, I came around the corner and saw the covered bridge up in the distance. I was pretty focused on what I was doing and really wasn't very concerned with the structure of the bridge like I normally was. It also wasn't completely dark out yet. When the bridge first came into sight, I could have sworn I saw a person standing outside of it. It looked like they entered the bridge from the near side and were walking through it. I thought that was a bit weird and thought possibly I would offer them a ride when I came up to the bridge. When I got to the entrance of the bridge, I saw that there was indeed a person walking through it. However, when I got there, he had stopped on the far entrance. He had turned around and looked at me. He was blocking the exit and looking right at my car. My previous intention of offering a ride slipped my mind. He was a bit of a scary looking guy and he had a huge smile on his face. I had to stop my car. There wasn't enough room to go past him. The bridge was only one thin lane. I stopped and wondered what I would do. But then, he started taking steps towards me. He was still smiling, and this was very creepy. He walked about halfway through the bridge at me, and then stopped. I'll never forget that creepy but genuinely happy smile on his face. He stood there for a moment, just looking at me. I wasn't sure how much time had passed with him just standing there. But then suddenly, he walked to the side of the bridge. He perched himself up on one of the openings on the side, turned back and smiled at me again, and then he jumped off the side of the bridge into the ravine. I was shocked, like an idiot. I jumped out of the car and ran to where he was. There wasn't anything I could do, and by the time I got there, he had to have hit the bottom of the ravine. I looked down and didn't see anything, but that was not surprising. It was very deep. I didn't know what to do. I don't know how long I stood there, looking down in that ravine. I realized I had to drive the town and contact the authorities. I went straight to the police station and told them the story. The police officer I spoke to seemed really disinterested in me. But when I was done, he looked at me and asked me a bunch of weird questions. Finally, he told me that he could go to the ravine and look for the body, but he knew he wouldn't find it. For the past ten years, he had people coming down off that mountain every once in a while, telling him that exact same story, but no body has ever been found in the ravine. So I don't know what to think. Was he just trying to keep me from following up? Was he serious about the amount of people who had told the story? I don't know. But I do know what I saw. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. I'm really happy that my friend Jerry's GoFundMe campaign is up to $1,080 of the $1,500 goal. Thank you all very, very much, those who have donated, those who have shared the link, and even those who have not donated but given us well wishes. They're all appreciated. 
Like usual, I will include the link in case anyone wants to donate or share the link on social media. I will update more on Jerry's situation in the coming days. Dealing with the situation is why I haven't had a video up in a week. Currently, thanks to the money already donated, I've been able to get him a temporary place to stay and his insulin. This covered bridge topic is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. It took me nearly three months of looking to find these stories, so I hope you enjoy them. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, or use the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Feel free to leave some comments to let me know what you think of the video, and consider sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it. You can always follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter. If you have a story you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. I hope you're all having a great week. And please, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed. Because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.